First and foremost, I'd like to welcome everyone to this um, Gluco product demo webinar. Uh, we're planning on doing a couple of these um, uh, throughout the year, uh, basically to kind of let uh, you know everyone know sort of what are the, the major updates that we've made to Gluco. Um, I know there's a sort of a diverse audience here, some people who are sort of relatively new to Gluco, some people who are probably very experienced users um, and just kind of want to know what the latest updates are and the latest changes. Um, so we welcome everyone. We have a uh, our full team on. We have folks from marketing. We have folks from account management, typically the folks that you probably have been dealing with, uh, interfacing with, and also uh, folks from our customer support. They're live right now. So if you have any ongoing questions, whether related to anything Gluco, please feel free to go ahead and type those in in the Q&A function at the bottom in our customer support team that's on staff, we'll be happy to answer those questions and, and make sure that you get any concerns addressed. If you have any questions regarding the presentation itself uh, as you're listening, uh, feel free to address those as well to the Q&A function, um, and we will uh, endeavor to, to address those at the end of the presentation. Um, and with that, I'd like to uh, just give a quick update as to the agenda for today. Um, we will be covering sort of what's new, uh, go through some of the latest updates, uh, especially that's taken place in 2023, some of the changes to the functionalities of the platform. Then later on, we will really do a deep dive into the mobile app, which I know many of you have probably seen or heard from your patients about how that app is working and have some questions about sort of the latest features, the latest design and what have you. We'll have our product manager really walk through the, the sort of the design, the redesign process and sort of all of the updates that we've made. And then finally, we'll wrap up quickly regarding some of our EHR integration options. I know that's a that's a big topic for a lot of folks uh, to think about how they're going to use the different various uh, EHR capabilities to have a smoother clinical workflow. And so we'll we'll review what some of those options are so that you have a better understanding and know um, how to talk to uh, potentially your Gluco account rep about what types of integration options will make sense for you. So with that, I will uh, go ahead and turn this over now to Kaylin Kelleher, who is the Director of Account Management. Thanks, Michael. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be with you today to talk a little bit about what's new with Gluco and also to introduce you to our newly redesigned mobile app. So let's talk about what's new. We continue to invest in our platform, and year to date, we have added over 21 new devices to our platform, and that number will continue to grow throughout the year. We've also invested in key security features that are important in today's environment to help keep your data and your patient's data safe. And for easier administrative processes, we have expedited account deletion when a patient is no longer a patient at your clinic, so you can focus on what's important, which is patient care. And in addition to that, we've also been working hard to bring you our newly redesigned mobile app. So this next slide shows our ever-increasing device compatibility with a list of the 21 new devices I previously mentioned that we've added this year. We are compatible with over 95% of diabetes devices on the market today. Uh, for more information on device compatibility, you can visit us at gluco.com slash compatibility to learn more. So let's talk a little bit more about the mobile app before we move into the demo. We are really, really excited to bring you our new mobile app experience, which creates a modern view for users to organize and share their data with you, their healthcare provider. Gluco's mobile app will help your patients seamlessly get connected with their care teams from home and will also empower them to take control of their health in a way that they have not been able to before. The new home screen will make seeing glucose trends, logging medication, and tracking food and exercise easier than ever. Um, we can see that a little bit on this next slide right here. The newly designed screen on the right, there it is, will allow the patient to more easily get onboarded and share their data with you by creating an intuitive experience that makes it easy for them to get started. As you can see in the middle of the screen on the right, it's also easier to log your food, medication, and exercise by having all of those tools, like, tools accessible by a click of a button. And now I'm going to turn it over to Chase, one of our great product managers, to walk you through the mobile app experience. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining today. Uh, 
I just want to echo what uh, Kaylin was saying. We really appreciate everyone um, showing up today. And uh, I'd also like to thank a lot of the clinics and patients who we've had a chance to interview um, and help collaborate on this new version of the mobile app. Um, it, <clears throat> I think a couple of years ago with, with COVID, um, telehealth and remote care kind of got thrust upon us in a way no one was really expecting, and that brought on a lot of feedback in terms of um, how Gluco is able to support the connection from home. And uh, it was because of this, I think we really woke up to a couple different places where our mobile and a patient experience was struggling in that area that was more pressing than ever. So um, that was kind of the impetus behind us really taking a a much more deeper look at how we're getting patients connected from home and uh, getting clinics and patients connected um, uh, to facilitate tel to facilitate telehealth appointments that were uh, needed at that time and continued to be needed today. So, um, with that said, just a quick overview of how Gluco kind of fits together. So. Um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the in-clinic transmitter and uploader that allows patients to bring in their devices into the clinic and sync. Um, and that goes to your uh, an analysis tools where you can print out charts and graphs and view charts and graphs um, and interact with those statistics just from those in-clinic uploads. Um, but I think some awareness um, that still isn't quite out there today is we have a couple at home solutions that patients can use to upload on a regular basis to simulate that same in clinic upload experience. And that data all goes uh, to the charts and graphs that you guys are uh, familiar with. So, with that being said, um, we got a lot of feedback from uh, both clinics and patients that. Um, the mobile app was very difficult and time consuming to get up and running for the average patient. Some tech savvy patients were able to do this by themselves and um, be off to the races, but a lot of patients and clinics were uh, doing a lot of hand holding in terms of helping patients get set up and make their way to that first sink at home. Um, so we, we're, we're listening and we, we hear the pain points there. Um, and also we were hearing a lot that patients weren't, uh, wasn't quite registering with patients that uh, they needed it when they needed a sync and if their data had gone stale or not. So the, those were a couple driving forces behind the redesign. Okay, so like I was saying, um, this is a legacy design and um, the, the, the biggest thing was that a lot of patients were falling off before they ever reached the, the first successful sink at home. Um, if patients did, a lot of patients needed help from the clinics to do so. Um, this is, so these are just some anecdotes that we got from our user research. Um, I wish somebody would just tell me what to do and I'd do it. I want my doctor to see my data. So that was kind of the feeling behind patients. They want to get connected from home. They want to complete these actions, but they weren't able to do so just because of kind of how the onboarding experience was set up. Uh, number two, it was unclear if data was current or not looking at the mobile app. So if they thought their devices were syncing, which they could have been um, there at one point, they'd see data on the home screen, but the data was tied to the last time data actually came through. So this always looked like a um, up-to-date version of the app when in reality it could have been um, you know, three months in the past, and it still looked like there was current data. And then the last thing is that uh, a lot of patients, when it clicked for them that when they're seeking from home and that data was being sent to their care teams, they were much more motivated to uh, to actually complete some of these actions where there were fr friction points. Um, so we're, we're we have that in the back of our mind as well as we're going through this design process. Um, here are some of the different iterations that we worked through. Again, a couple of the key things that you see in these examples are a more structured onboarding experience and highlighting the clinic connection uh, from the get-go. 
So as you can see, we're doing some usability testing in each of these versions and finding different friction points. And we stopped at a point where we saw that the average user could routinely successfully sync on their own without outside help. Um, so there were a number of things we saw with the current version and also we were working our way through different things as we got to the final version. Uh, so in response to that feedback and those pain points that we uh, found from, from, from talking to our users um, is a new onboarding experience. So there are a couple of key steps that uh, I think everybody wants to see a patient be able to do at home on their own and feel successful with. So one of those is syncing a glucose device for the first time. Um, if the user uh, is on an insulin treatment, uh, getting that set up with Gluco, and then also completing their profile so that we have some data uh, around who they are to better target them with uh, communications that we have planned for the future for um, better syncing uh, adherence and things of that nature. Um, so this uh, onboarding guide has these goals. There's a first set of goals, a, a couple more are coming, but these walk the user step-by-step step through what to do for each of these things, which we heard from clinics, they were saying we had to walk patients step-by-step step ourselves through each of these processes. So hopefully this is taking the burden off of um, care teams and allowing them to put time in better places. Uh, another update that we have here is highlighting the care team connection. So uh, when you invite a patient to Gluco from your HCP portal on Gluco, and they activate through the invite email that they get or the printout QR code activation that they have at home, when they create a password through the email that gets sent out, they're automatically pro-connected or connected to your clinic. So any data that they sync here gets sent to your portal for you to view. Also, any data that was previously synced in the clinic for them to an account uh, we'll be here waiting for them uh, when they get to their patient account at home. Um, that when, if you click into this tab, there's a couple other things. Um, so you can, patients can also manually share reports through this button, and they have a list of active care teams here as well um, if they're uh, connected to more than one site, and then they can also continue adding care teams um, as they see fit. Another update that we have is uh, a recent time horizon view on the home screen. So like we're looking at the legacy home screen, that data was always looking current no matter how much time had passed just because the time frame was never shifting. On the new version of that, um, we're always looking at the home screen at least for the current two weeks back. So it's always today to the previous two weeks. And so if two weeks passes and the user had added a data type at any given point, but two weeks pass and they, hadn't, they haven't added data since then, they'll have an empty state here that will prompt them to the next, to do the next thing to get data back into that category. But they can dismiss it if they want, and this will pop up again later, but this is trying to let uh, users know that the data that they were looking at has gone stale and it's time to refresh. So um, real quick, uh, we're going to go through how to invite a patient to Gluco when creating a patient account on the HCP portal. Um, this is just your standard create patient account modal. And the thing that I really want to highlight here is the email address field. Um, some, some clinics have this configured to be set as optional, but in order for a patient to be uh, invited to Gluco, that email address needs to be filled out. Um, but this also helps with limiting and preventing duplicate accounts in the future so that um, as you're syncing over time, it's all going to one account. So if the day does come where you want to invite your patient to Gluco and use the Gluco app at home, they'll have all that historical data waiting for them when they download the app and then uh, finally activate their account and get to their uh, charts and graphs. Um, and when a, uh, 
when an in-clinic upload happens, there's the professional view um, that you all are uh, familiar with where you can see the different charts and graphs in the web view. On the patient view, this same exact data will be waiting for the patient um, when they activate their own version um, of their at-home account. So uh, the, the point of the mobile goals, uh, the mobile onboarding goals, is to give these step-by-step -step instructions that clinics have normally been having to talk users through themselves. So in this example, um, syncing a glucose device for the first time, uh, we determine what, we ask the user what kind of glucose device they use. This helps narrow the list. We've heard a lot from patients that um, it's, it's hard to find their exact device because there's so many devices in the device list these days. Um, this helps narrow the list a little bit, and then they can select their device from here. Uh, one of the future onboarding goals that we're going to be coming out with soon um, is we'll just pull exactly what device they synced in the clinic last and have that um, selection already made for them. But for now, uh, we're narrowing the list and allowing the user to select a device, which has a corresponding tutorial um, for that specific device to get uh, connected and syncing. So now I am going to walk through a demo of the new version of the app. Okay, so this is what a um, brand new user to Gluco would see um, for their very first time. Um, but to simulate the connected experience, we're gonna add uh, demo pro connect code. And this is where patients can go if they have an existing account and they wanna connect um, to your clinic, they can put in your pro connect code here and connect um, manually this way, and they're pro connected. So now any data that's in this uh, person's account will be sent to the connected care team. Um, quickly walking through the sync goals. Uh, this is what we just looked at earlier. Um, so there's ways to get out of each of these goals for the user. So if the user syncs a CGM device or a BG meter, they'll be, this goal will be completed. Um, but if they don't, if the user for some reason doesn't check their blood glucose, that goal also gets completed. Um, tracking The tracking insulin goal, this walks the users through a similar device narrowing setup. So uh, we ask the user if they're on a pump, a, a smart pen or a syringe. Um, if they're on a pump or a pen and they have a compatible device and they sync the device, then they will be, um, then this goal will be, be completed for them as well. Uh, if they just manually uh, take uh, injections, they could also go to the um, add event screen for insulin and the goal would be completed there. Um, or if the user doesn't take insulin, they can also um, say that in there, that goal would also be completed. And then last, and this, this um, goal is going to be uh, added over time uh, or built on over time, but we're collecting um, the some basic demographic information from the user. Um, and this will help us target uh, with different communications um, that we currently have planned uh, for the future. So yeah, once the users work their way through all the different goals here, um, they'll they'll reach this success uh, screen with some confetti. Um, and then this would normally uh, have more data in it if I was actually had to have gone through and completed some of these things. But we can go through and add a food and show how the uh, how the different data cards can populate. So for instance, you can search for a food.
chicken Caesar salad. And then if I add that food, this uh, data card will populate um, on the home screen with recent data for that uh, food type. Um, there's also a couple different ways that you can add foods through this uh, same add event. So that we have barcode scanner, which allows you to scan a barcode. Um, and we also have a, oops, this is a demo environment, so they might have. I'll, um, I'll log into a different account and give this a try again. Um, you can also add fo food through voice ad um, when you're in a more, when you're in a production environment. Um, and adding insulin. So we have an insulin list as well that people can man manually select from and add uh, dosages to. And so the history screen populates here with the uh, user's diary for that day, and it plots the data points in this today view graph. Um, and as you can see, the charts and graphs for um, this user are being built out over time, and these will turn into empty states um, as the uh, user continues to um, use that. But I'm going to switch to a different um, a different account. So I'm going to hand it off to the team uh, to make some small chat as I as I log out here. While we're doing that, um, just wanted to reiterate for everyone to please uh, ask your questions in the Q&A functionality so that our customer support team can monitor that and uh, respond live, because I know many of you have similar questions, um, so we want to make sure that the, that the responses is being shared with everyone and not just being directed to you directly. So, so please, if you do have any questions regarding the mobile app, uh, regarding various device compatibilities, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A uh, button down below. And then our uh, customer support team will answer those questions and then publish the uh, responses for everyone to see. Thank you. This is going to take just a minute to load the data here. In the meantime, we uh, would also also appreciate any feedback that you may have regarding this webinar itself, as well as the app, the um, um, the you know the the usage of it, the the design of it, anything like that. We're always very interested in the feedback from our users. We know you know we're trying to you know as Chase mentioned, we. Um, are trying to design this for all of the different use cases and the more feedback that we have from our customer base uh, across sort of the wide spectrum of use case scenarios will definitely help us in, in will help inform us to make sure that we're, we're continuing to develop and innovate the app in the best way possible for you. So please feel free to chime in as well uh, with any other uh, feedback or uh, comments um, as appropriate. Yes, and um, we, Collaborated with a number of clinics during uh, during this redesign process, both in terms of just learning about their workflow and where they were running into issues with um, with gluco in general and the patient experience in specific. Um, and their feedback went a long way towards informing how we went about different things here. Um, so if uh, if you, I think it would be yeah. Really good opportunity um, to help us collaborate on future versions of the app and inform next iterations here. Uh, we know this isn't, uh, there are a lot of things we would have liked to do, but we didn't have time to do it in this current version, but we're going to continue to iterate. Um, and we'd love for you guys to be part of that iteration. So. Should be good now. Let's keep it open. Thank 
Apologies, I'm switching through demo environments, and this is. Okay, so that was a pretty data intensive account and um, somewhat reflective of someone who's been going to the clinic for many years and is downloading all their data um, to their phone for the first time. Um, so that took that takes a second. Um, however, that being said, these charts and graphs that we were looking at earlier now have some CGM data um, for us to look at, as well as some insulin data. Um, you'll also see that the user had added exercise from different sources in the past, but now that they haven't added anything in the past two weeks, um, they're being prompted to add data um, to populate these different areas. Um, you can still see averages over time by clicking into charts and graphs here, um, where you still have the three month view, the one month view, two week view or the one week view, um, both for carbs, insulin, CGM, um, whatever the user has in these timeframes, these, these graphs will still populate so you can see your averages over time. Um, you also have the CGM overlay time of day graph um, at the bottom here, which shows the user and how they're uh, averaging at a different time of day, be it in the morning, uh, middle of the day or at night. Uh, and the trends are still accessible um, from these um, areas here. So when you go into the devices, um, you'll see the different uh, devices that have both been synced at home and in the clinic. Uh, so it gives the status of whether or not there's an active connection for some of these cloud connections or whether it's a uh, uh, BLE connection that needs to be paired. The user's prompted to take the next step to get data flowing in each of these states. Um, or if it's a tandem, for instance, um, just to sync their device. And syncing a compatible device that's only compatible through the web um, will be facilitated by um, an email invite to get uh, up and running with the uploader on their computer while they're where they can sync their control IQ there. Um, and the daily log, you have the history over time here as you scroll through the days, you can see um, the different units. Um, care teams, multiple care teams are uh, connected here. And let's try that food again. Mm. Yeah, this demo environment's not playing nice, nicely with me right now, but um, there are the multiple ways to add foods and the different add event buttons here as well. Um, that being said, uh, we're very excited about continuing to iterate on this with everyone, and we will be... Um, we would love to hear any feedback that you guys have as users try getting onboarded um, and activated with the new app. We hope that uh, this makes your guys' lives a little easier and uh, helps you have better care and better appointments. So really appreciate your time. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Chase. So one thing that's really exciting about a direct Gluco account is our ability to integrate directly into your EHR system, saving you time and effort and spending more time with your patients. On this slide, you'll see a mock-up of what an EHR integration might look like for your clinic within your EHR, as well as a testimonial from a current customer on what EHR means for them and their clinic, which is you know patient safety and clinic efficiency. For more detail on this, you can go to our YouTube channel, search for Gluco, and there are some great resources for you there and some videos that you can watch to get a more in-depth look about what EHR integrations look like. 
to get into a little bit more detail on the integrations available on this slide, let's move on to this slide. So our EHR, EHR integration options help to streamline your workflow and improve data accessibility at your clinic. We have the following options available currently. Gluco OneClick, which provides one-click access to Gluco patient accounts from within the EHR. Uh, we also have Gluco Create Patient Account Workflow, which will allow Gluco to create patient accounts using the data from the EHR, creating a seamless experience to create patient, patient accounts. We also have Gluco Flow Sheet Statistics, which delivers discrete data into the flow sheet of the EHR. And then we also have Gluco Report Summaries, which attaches the Gluco PDF Report Summary to the patient's EHR record for easy access. And then for each of the above, we also have a workflow that will suit your clinic's individual needs. So we have an in-clinic workflow, which will deliver Gluco data when the patients sync via the transmitter in-clinic. We have a remote syncing workflow, which will de deliver Gluco data on a set cadence, you know, every seven days, every 14 days, whatever works for you. And then on-demand workflow, which will deliver Gluco data when the order is placed within the EHR, which is really a uh, best of both worlds between being in clinic and having your patients sync via the mobile app remotely. Hello, Hi. everyone. Oh, sorry. I'll hop in camera if that's okay. Hi everyone, my name is Phil Krieg. I'm our Vice President of uh, Global Customer Support and Logistics. I wanted to say thank you all for attending today and for the thoughtful questions. We are still working through some of those. So if you hadn't had an answer yet, please hold on and we will get one over for you. Uh, there may be a case where we are going to need to ask you to contact support. And if you provide us your email address, we will have someone from our support team reach out to you directly. So I just wanted to cover uh, additional support resources for you should you need any further assistance. So our customer support is available in North America from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. And if you contact us, uh, our US-based team speaks three different languages for your convenience. So you can get support for your patients in English, Spanish, and French. We also have a variety of different ways that you can contact our team. So Help Center is always available at support.gluco.com. And on there, we have a multitude of articles, explanations, and instructions available for you 24 seven. You can also email, call, or text us at the numbers provided below. And I always recommend for instant support to use our live chat function, which you can find on our Help Center if you visit support.gluco.com. There's a little blue box down in the right-hand corner that says chat that will connect you directly to an agent. Uh, again, wanna thank you all for your time today. Appreciate your attendance and we will work through the remainder of your questions. Hope you found this helpful and informative. And Michael, Cameron, I'll pass it back over to you for any other closing thoughts. All right. Um, I think there's a couple of still open questions, so we'll sort of keep the line open to address those um, since we have you guys on the line right now. And so we can go ahead and uh, sort of if you have any remaining uh, outstanding questions, feel free to ask them. And I know our uh, customer support team is trying to catch up here uh, and, and getting all of those uh, questions answered. Uh, if you haven't been you sort of following, you've been paying attention to the presentation, which you should have been, but haven't been looking at the Q&A, feel free to pop into the Q&A here as well, too, to look at some of the uh, questions that uh, maybe you share as well that uh, someone has asked for on your behalf for you, and just take a look at those answers. But yeah, in, in closing, definitely, you know, one of the things that, you know, we really want to reiterate is, you know, uh, as a software company um, that's focused on continuous innovation, we're, con we're constantly working on trying to improve our product and try to make sure that the product makes sense for a variety of different use cases, workflows, uh, clinic sizes, you know, different types of patients, uh, different types of, of, um, of folks in general. And so... I know um, we appreciate all the feedback. I know sometimes it may seem like those feedback are falling on deaf ears or changes haven't been made, but, but, but please keep in mind that we're trying to be a broad platform that supports everyone as much as possible. And so we're continuously uh, making those improvements. And uh, we have folks like Chase, as you can see from today's call, uh, from today's presentation, 
you know, he takes things very seriously in terms of how he takes all the feedback from our users and tries to de deliver an experience that's really going to be convenient, uh, relevant, and ultimately impactful for, uh, for everyone's day-to-day -day use. So with that, uh, I once again, really appreciate everyone's time uh, and attention. Um, and going forward, we will uh, continue to schedule these types of webinars whenever there's a major update. And uh, it's a great time to kind of share with you because I know it's hard to kind of keep track of all of the different updates that we're constantly making to the platform. So whenever we sort of have sort of a, a bolus of, of new product improvements like we have here with the mobile app, uh, we will we will gladly schedule some time to to review this with you, um, and and we will also send out a copy of this recording for for you. So if you want to share with your colleagues uh, later on, um, because there's some some bits and pieces that uh, you wanted to for review, we will we will do that probably a few days after the conclusion of this webinar.